All righty. Great crowd. Wow. Nice full house this morning. Wonderful. Thank you all for being here. Uh, glad you could get out this morning because you can't tomorrow morning. Um, so uh, it's kind of interesting thing. My wife, my wife told me that it seems like I snore loudly. Uh, and I'm like, well, I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm kind of suspect about that because nobody at the office has ever mentioned anything about it. So, yeah, Mike's not here to make fun of that. That's okay. All righty, here's what's going on. Don't forget, uh, this week, every week now, you can get online, whbcok.org, and you can look at the bulletin, see what to, what's going on during that week, and you can see what we're having for Wednesday night meals now, so you can just jump online and see what we're going to feed on Wednesday night. And don't forget, Wednesday nights, we have a great selection of Bible study classes, um, you can see the list of them. I think I don't know if they're in the bullet or not anymore, but there's some papers out there. You can grab on those papers, and we meet the, for those classes at 6:30 every week, and they're really, really good. So you might want to take a part of those Bible studies. Tonight we have our quarterly business meeting. It will be at 5 p.m. We meet down at the student center area, and we want to just answer any questions you have about our, our finances, what's going on, uh, where we're at. Just you know, we're, we'll answer anything. So if you want to come be a part of that, we invite you to be there. Uh, 5 p.m. tonight, answer questions, show you what we're doing. Uh, it's a good time to, to get involved in, in where we're at as a church. Uh, also in your bulletin, you'll notice that our loss of spouse, our grief share ministry, is getting ready to kick off. It begins with a one-day event. It's a Saturday morning event. It's from two hours, from 10 till uh, noon, and that begins on February 3rd. And then we kick off the, uh, the regular meetings on that following Thursday the 8th. It's our grief share ministry for people. If you know somebody that's had a, had a loss in their family and they would like to have some help with that, this is a fantastic ministry for that. There's sign-up lists out there and invite people, maybe neighbors that you know that have gone through that type of struggle. Please, please let them know that's getting ready to happen. And I think that's everything we got going on. So we got Brother Blake here this morning to lead us in worship. Thank you for doing that. So let's, let's pray as we start, to start our worship this morning. Father God, um, again, uh, it's just a blessing that you, you invite us to come and spend time in your presence in worship and praise. And so this morning, I just pray as we, as we sit here, as we relax and we enjoy this time, God, may it be a time of, of spiritual change, God. We just, I don't want us so badly, God, I don't want us to come in here and to just waste this time of just being in a, in a circle, in a group of people, God. I want us to hear from you, God. I want us to be changed. I want the Holy Spirit to do a work in us. Please, God, please help us all to come in with a hunger for what you have for us today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church family. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. amen. Let's stand and worship. There's joy in the house 
of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We were the best. baptize somebody, especially one of our uh, youth, somebody who's accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and they want to show all of you uh, that they are following Jesus Christ. It's where I'm saying, I have been buried with Christ. I'm leaving my old self behind. I'm a new person. I'm a follower of Jesus. Excited to be here right now. This is Haley. Haley, uh, she, God began kind of working on her heart around camp time. And uh, pretty soon after camp, she started asking questions, trying to uh, kind of figure out who is Jesus and trying to figure out uh, what salvation is. And then a, a few months after that, uh, she actually came up and spoke to me after the service and said that she was ready and she wanted to accept Jesus Christ and follow him. So we're, we're excited that she's here today, she's decided to do that. Um, but before we do that, uh, she's asked Ashlyn Turner to pray for her today. So would you please pray for her? Please bow your heads and pray with me. Dear most gracious and heavenly Father, today we come to thank you for sweet Haley and the impact that you have made on her life. We thank you for this pre precious gift of baptism and that Haley has the opportunity to publicly express her love for you and that she decided to fully commit her life to you. What a blessing this is, Father. Please guide her steps throughout her journey and lead her to make more disciples in your name. We praise you today for the grace and the love that you have and give. Guide Haley to bear fruit and to strive to be more like you every day. For her days may consist of joy, of hope, of sadness, or even of fear, but we pray today that Haley can turn her perspective to you no matter the earthly circumstance. Lord, that she will use her beautiful testimony to resemble you. Haley is such a precious and God-loving young lady. We are, we are so beyond grateful for her sweet soul. We endlessly praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. Step forward. Plug it Haley, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> All right. 
It's exciting. I love being here. I love this church. Um, thank you guys for being able to celebrate with us and celebrate this moment. Bruce, will you do the military prayer and pray for us? Thank you. Thought we were going to have to pray for Haley a little harder there. <laughs> this is the time when we pray for our military. The names on the list are men and women who are overseas. They're also in your bulletin. Take time to pray for them during the week. They, they're away from family, away from friends. They're in a hostile environment that we might have the freedoms that we do. Pray for them this week. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for allowing us to live in the United States of America, in Oklahoma. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the freedoms that we have, but those freedoms didn't come free. People have had to pay a price for that. So, Father, may we be grateful enough to pray for those that are securing our freedom. Lord, we also pray for our first responders as they serve us in these difficult weather days and in difficult times. Lord, help us to be faithful, to pray for those who serve us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and continue to worship. I'm there. 
Father God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you that we can gather in this place right now, Father, and that we can lift praises to your name. God, that we have the freedom to come here and to worship you, God. Thank you for the work that you're doing in this church, God. That you're working in our youth, you're working in our adults, God, that people are coming to know you, God, and starting relationship with you, God, and we praise you. And we rejoice in the fact that we have a new sister in Christ. God, I pray that we would always have our hearts adore you, Father. God, I thank you for your love, peace, and mercy, and grace, God. God, I pray that you would just be with us as we enter into our part of worship, God, when we open the word. Speak to us, God. Let us hear from you today. Let us grow deeper in our relationship with you. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes, who seek him with all their heart. They do no wrong, but follow his ways. You have laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed, that my ways were steadfast in obeying your decrees, then I would not be put to shame when I consider all of your commands. I will praise you with an upright heart as I learn your righteous laws. I will obey your decrees. Do not utterly forsake me. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? by living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord. Good morning. Take your Bibles. Turn to Matthew. Matthew chapter 2. Matthew 2. We've been talking the last few weeks about what are you looking for. So question, you came to church today. What are you looking for? Now how many of you all came to see Haley get baptized? Ah, a bunch. Wow. That's great. That's great. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. You know, Haley, she accepted Christ, but then... In, you know, we can say anything, but I know she spent a lot of time with Gracie. Gracie, thank you. And uh, thank you for spending time with Haley, and Haley's taken for that time with, with Gracie. When we accept Christ as a new child in Christ, we need to grow. And so that's what was happening, so thank you. What, what is most misunderstood about you about you what what do people who know you or maybe they don't know you very well but what do they most misunderstand about you you ever thought about that what do they most misunderstand about you next question what do they most misunderstand what do we most misunderstand about Jesus as we look at scripture today, we're, we're going to take a look and see it. maybe some misunderstandings. Sometimes what we go looking for, we, it depends on what we're looking for, whether we find it or not, and what we find. The shepherds went looking for what? After the angel spoke to them, a baby in a manger. They found that baby in a manger. It's what they went looking for. Simeon and Anna in the temple. Simeon was told by Holy Spirit that he would not die until he saw the Messiah. 
And one day when he was urged to go to the temple, he was there and, and God impressed upon him that this young couple walking in with this baby, that is the Messiah. I wonder if Ms. Simeon was looking for a grown man. I would have been. I would not have been looking for a Messiah that was a baby. I don't know about you. Anna, as she heard them talking, she said, this is who I've been praying for to see. We're going to look at two other, one group of people and then a single individual. And what were they looking for? Matthew chapter 2, beginning verse 1. It says, now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Wise men, these, these are men who do a lot of studying and all. They'd seen a star has led them to Jerusalem. They'd come hundreds of miles from where they were to Jerusalem. They're looking for this child that was born king of the Jews. And so they, they come into the city and they, they, don't, they don't know where to go. So they start asking people, where is the child that's born king of the Jews? Surely you all know. People went, I don't know. Look at verse 3. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Herod had, the king had his spies out there and, and when these people start talking about looking for a king of the Jews you know the king kind of an operative word there Herod was the king he feels threatened and so they come and say hey we've got these people looking for somebody who's supposed to be a king and, and Herod gets worried and when Herod gets worried everybody else gets worried you never know anybody like that if somebody's in a bad mood uh, you, you want to watch out for them remember I worked at a company one time and and we took turns, each morning we took turns going into his office first thing in the morning and to see what kind of mood he was in. Because depending on what kind of mood he was in, depending on whether we would go in and see him that day or not. And the first, per the first person came out of the room, we, they didn't have to say, we could tell by the expression on their face, ooh, not going into him today. But when Herod was in a bad mood, people suffered. Matter of fact, here are some of the things that Herod did. Um, Herod married 10 wives. That was probably a warning right there. He had a number of sons who want, and they wanted to be king. Dad, when are you going to die so I can be the king? Or I want to be king over my brother. I want to. And so there was always this conflict there. It got so bad that Herod killed three of his sons. I know sometimes we joke about that, but we would never do that, right? He also killed his favorite wife, Mary Ann, and then her mother. He killed the high priest, had the high priest come over there playing water polo. I don't know what happened, but he drowned the priest. He killed several uncles and cousins. When Herod knew that his end of life was here and he was about to die, he had all the leaders of Jerusalem, had them all arrested and kept in this place called the Hippodrome. And then with the order that when he died, when Herod died, all these men were to be killed. Why? Because Herod knew that nobody would be sad when he died. But he wanted there to be wailing and, and grief. And so he knew that if all these other people were killed, there would be wailing and grief. It may not be for him, but there would be. C can you picture a cruel, mean, selfish man that's what Herod was like. He's on his throne. He gets up. He comes in one day and his spies come and say, hey, there's some people said there's a king of the Jews that's here in Jerusalem. It's been born here. Look at verse 4. And when he, Herod, had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So he got the... The, the chief priests and the teachers and said, okay, this, this king of the Jews, the Messiah, where, where is he going to be born at? In verse 5, so they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, but you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. This was written by the prophet Micah over 700 years before Jesus was born. 
Now, is it going to get icy tonight or tomorrow? Maybe, maybe not. We have a hard time telling what it's going to be like in a few hours. Micah, over 700 years ahead, said the Messiah would be born, could have been anywhere in the world. Where, what? He said in, in Bethlehem. God has a plan, and God works his plan. So Herod had called the chief priests and teachers and all in and find out where is this Messiah going to be born, they said, in Bethlehem. Then Herod secretly called the wise men, these people that came asking about this king of the Jews being born they're looking for. He secretly called them, determined from them when the time the star appeared. He said, when did you first see the star? Herod was a, a, he was a sharp man. He was very smart. It's the only way he could have stayed in ruling as long as he did. Verse 8. And so then Herod sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you found him, bring, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. Isn't that great? Herod wants to worship him also. Verse 9. When they, the wise men, heard the king, they departed. Now, they didn't need the king to know to go to Bethlehem. They came to Jerusalem because that's where the star led them. But when they left Jerusalem, behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Now this, is, this isn't the birth of Jesus. This is months or even a few years after. Joseph and Mary have taken up home in Bethlehem and... and uh, the star went over the place, the home that they were living in. So when they, the wise men, saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they'd come into the home, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and noticed what they did. They first, they fell down. Who do you fall down in front of? Nobody. I'm not bound to anybody. You know, it would take somebody pretty, pretty special for us to bow down. How many of us bow down to our grandkids? <clears throat> They're pretty special, I think. But the first thing these wise men did, these are intelligent men, these are strong men. First thing they did when they saw this young child, it wasn't a baby anymore, he was a young child. What did they do? They fell down before him. Why? Because they realized this is the Messiah, the one written of in the scriptures. We get to see him. Folks, do you know, just, just as they got to see scripture fulfilled, we are living in a day of fulfillment of scripture. There are things happening today that scripture has foretold for hundreds and hundreds of years. And if you just look at it, you, you can see what's happening. First thing is they fell down and they worshipped him. Imagine worshiping a young child. They worshiped him, and when they had opened their, pre their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What a scene that must have been. You're in your home. You have a young child. The door, somebody knocks at the door, and here's all of these people. It's probably more than just three wise men, but they're, they're, all these people come. And they come in, and then you see them just fall down before your son. And then they begin to worship him. And then they begin to give these gifts, and it wasn't a stuffed toy. It was gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What do you think Joseph and Mary were thinking? Man, wouldn't that have been incredible? It would have been absolutely incredible. Verse 12. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, the wise men departed for their own country another way. I don't know what the wise men were looking for when they came. They were looking for a child born king of the Jews. I wonder if they were surprised when they saw it. Maybe he wasn't just a baby anymore. Look at verse 13. They fell down, they worshipped him, they gave him gifts. Let's see what, how Herod responds. 
Verse 13, now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream saying, arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. So God spoke to Joseph. So Joseph, in a dream, Joseph, take and notice what he says. He appeared to Joseph in a dream, arise, take the young child and his mother. Notice he doesn't say, take your son. Why does he not say, take your son? Because it's not his son. God chose him to raise, to, to be with Mary and to raise Jesus. But it wasn't his son. Jesus was the son of God. Verse 14, when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt. Notice the next morning, as soon as he woke up, what did Joseph do? He was obedient to the dream, to what God had told him to do. He was obedient. And departed for Egypt and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, out of Egypt I called my son. That's in Hosea. Then verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, after a period of time, Herod realized, those guys didn't come back like I told them to. I wonder if he thought about putting a group to chase after the wise men and kill them. Could have. Took courage on the wise men's part to disobey Herod and go their way. Herod, when he, was, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry. That's not a good situation for anybody. And he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Did that really happen? Did that really happen? When I, what we know of Herod, was he capable of that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was very capable of that. So he found out, remember he found out when the star first appeared to the wise men. He took that and he just did the math, which didn't take much. And he determined, okay, all baby boys born two years and under. It was probably under, but we're going to go two years to make sure we catch him. And then all the baby boys in Bethlehem and the surrounding areas will be put to death. Well, Bethlehem was a small town. Scholars think probably around 1,500 people. Surrounding areas were small. So you're not talking about hundreds of babies. But I mean, even one was tragic, right? 17. This was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are. No more. Jeremiah wrote that over 600 years before Jesus was born. 600 years before this happened. Verse 19. Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother. Again, notice, take the child and his mother. Not take your son, but take the child and his mother. And go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life are dead. So Joseph arose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea instead of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, he shall be called a Nazarene. What a story. What are we to do with that? God didn't just write this down for historical purposes. He wrote it down to affect our lives. So what do we do with this story? Notice, notice that God used angels to speak to shepherds, until shepherds go. Go find the baby in a manger. For he is Christ the Lord. And they go and they find him. And how did they respond? They were in awe. They bowed before him and they worshipped him. And they left. 
and were joyful. Simeon and Anna, for years being in the temple, watching for the consolation of Israel, watching for the Messiah to come. And finally one day, Simeon felt impressed the Holy Spirit to go to the temple that day. He went to the temple and then God revealed to him which young couple with the baby it was. And he went over. And we, we read that. It's in Luke, chapter Luke. And then Anna was there. And she heard that. And just the right time. God had everybody together just at the right time. And how did Simeon and Anna respond? With praise, with joy. And they left the temple joyful. Joyful because they had seen what they had been waiting their whole life to see. And then the wise men. Wise men came from hundreds of miles away. And they, they came and they found the baby Jesus, and, or the, the young child. And what did they get materially from that? What did the, young, what did the wise men gain materially from coming and seeing Jesus? Nothing. Matter of fact, it cost them. It was a costly trip. It took time. They gave gifts. It actually cost them. But what did they gain? They gained joy and peace. They saw he who was born king of the Jews. And they knew that it was God that led them there. Have you ever listened? you ever had an impression on you? Something just really urging you to do something? What do you think that is? It's not telepathy. It's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. I know during service, I was over there, first service, I was in there during the music part, and, and the family's name kept coming to my mind, kept coming to my mind. I had to write it down because I would forget. Why, why are they coming to my mind? I don't know. But I'm going to go call them and find out this afternoon. If God puts something on your heart, be obedient to him. There's a reason. Just as God spoke to the shepherds, just as he spoke to Simeon and to Anna and to the wise men, God will speak to us. You know why? It's because he loves you. God has a, he had a plan for them. He's got a plan for you. And he loves you. The only question is, will we be obedient to him? Herod had the opportunity to see the Messiah. How did Herod respond? Fear. He's going to change. This kid's going to change my life. I like the way my life is. I don't want it changed. The others were, God, tell us what to do. We will do it. Herod was... No, I'm going to get in control. The best way to get in control is to wipe him out. Remove the threat. What did Herod get from that? Fear. Frustration. He died a horrible death, by the way. A long-suffering death. So the question for you and me, who do you associate more with? Angels? I'm sorry, shepherds? Some of you are angels, aren't you? Shepherds? Simeon? Anna? The wise men? You ever associate yourself with Herod? I would never do those things. No. But sometimes do we say, God, I like my life the way it is, and I know you don't want me doing this, but God, I want to keep doing it. I want to keep doing it, God, even though I know it displeases you, I'm going to keep doing it. Because I like my life the way it is. And I don't want you to change me. I had a man tell me one time, he said, uh, I really don't want a relationship with God because I know he's going to make me change, and I don't want to change. That's a, that's a dangerous way to live. It's a very dangerous way to live. The question for you and me today, what are you looking for? You look for Jesus. 
No, I just came into church today because I had to come. My family made me come. I came to church today hoping they would sing some of my favorite songs. I came to church today hoping the preacher didn't talk too long. I just came to church today because it's going to make me feel better the rest of the day. Or did you come today looking to meet the king, the true king? Not some King Herod, but King Jesus. When we come, we need to come expecting to see him. Because Jesus shows up. He shows up all the time. The shepherds, Simeon, Anna, and the wise men, as they saw King Jesus, the baby, the young child, they had a view for eternity. Yes, they were living now, but they had a view for eternity. Herod wasn't looking at eternity. He was looking at the right now. And folks, when we focus on the right now, we lose out. We need to have a focus on eternity. You're young. I understand you not having a focus there. Everybody here but Dwayne. I understand that. When I, was, when I was younger, Jesus come back, but not now because I've got too much living to do. There's things I want to do. As we get older, how many of you think more of eternity than you used to when you were younger? I, uh, they were all over 30, by the way. Jesus, Jesus loves you. God loves you. He has a plan for your life. And it's more than just right now. Does he want you to enjoy life now? Yes. If you enjoy life now, great. Enjoy it. Enjoy life. But don't miss out on eternity. Because that's forever and ever and ever. And we never know when it's going to come. In fact, Thursday night after Celebrate Recovery, two of our ladies were involved in a car accident. It, they were hit from behind and it rolled th two or three times. They were banged up, but they're okay. Not here today because they're really, 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 really sore. They almost went into eternity. They were not expecting to. We don't know when we will go into eternity. So folks, we need to have a view. We need to be looking at eternity. And God has told us, everyone in here, God has told us, put our faith and trust in His Son, Jesus Christ. And live forever in God's presence. Or reject Jesus Christ and live forever away from him in a place that the Bible calls hell. He's told us that. If I'm living just right now, I don't have time for that. But if I'm living with a view of eternity, that makes, I'm, I'm, that's important to me. What are you looking for? What are you looking for when you think of Jesus? Looking for a good story, or are you looking for a Savior and a Lord? Let's pray. Father, thank you for your love for us. Father, thank you for telling us these stories of these folks. You don't always tell the good side. You, you, sometimes you tell the bad side, too. And Lord, that's helpful to us because we, we have good sides, but Lord, we also have bad sides. Lord, I pray for that person here today who's struggling. Life is not good right now. And Lord, the right now isn't good. Lord, help them to look at eternity. Because as we, we look at eternity, it makes now easier to handle. Father, I pray for that person who's enjoying now with no view of eternity. Father, help us Help us to enjoy life that you've given us. But Father, help us to realize there's so much more coming that we might be ready for it. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your plan for each of these folks. Thank you for your plan for us. Lord, may we be obedient to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So what does God expect from us? He expects us to seek Him with all of our heart. He expects us to be obedient to Him. 
and to worship him. This morning, if you've been seeking Jesus and you found him, just like Haley did, we invite you to come forward. Maybe you have questions. There's going to be people up here in the front to pray with. Maybe you just can worship. But stand as we sing, would you do whatever God tells you to do while we sing? Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Oh.